I want to make a quick video about a, uh, a problem I had at a job yesterday because it ties right in with um, what we've been talking about lately, particularly the first video I made on metering circuits, um, which was tracing down an open on a horn strobe circuit. And I, um, this, the job I was at yesterday perfectly illustrated the point of when you have both the end of line one direction and your source voltage the other direction, you know you found your problem. And so I'm going to try to do my best to explain the situation. Um, so I was on a, I was in a high rise and this is a uh, good enough drawing of about the type of suite that I was in. So um, this area down here was a, a common hallway which extended on beyond um, what you've seen here. The suite, let's say the suite was like a quarter of the building. So if you imagine you're looking at a quarter, not of the building, but of the floor, if you imagine you're looking at one quarter of a bigger building, what happened was there was a build out here. There's a, there's a riser room right here labeled FA riser. And uh, the equipment that powers the speakers and strobes on this floor were a few floors below, but they would go up to a Hoffman box where th there were terminal blocks. And so there were three visual circuits for this floor, one of which had a short on it. Um, so I don't know, I didn't know which area of the floor each circuit covered. Um, there was one speaker circuit that would hit the whole floor and then have an end of line, and then three separate visuals. So what I did was I went into the suite and took down one of the strobes because they had a mixture of speaker strobes and just strobes so the SV here is speaker visual and then the V is just visual and so my first thought when I when I when I took down the first device I had two two ohms so I don't remember which one I went to first let's say I went to this one first and I had I had two ohms or maybe I went to the riser closet first and, and saw that you know the short was about two ohms um, so my first thought was somebody wired a visual circuit backwards not a speaker visual but a visual a visual and the reason is these were wheel lock devices um, the speaker strobes the way they get wired up at least the model that they're using on site um, I should have had a drawing of this ready but I don't the speaker strobes basically there was one terminal for positive for the strobe one terminal for negative and then the same with the speaker side of it. One terminal for positive, one for the negative. So they didn't split either the positive or the negative. And so I didn't think it was very likely that that was a mistake. What I was expecting to find, if you know how the Wheelock STR strobes get wired, the bases look um, like these white bases here. And so the positive side of the circuit gets split when you put the device up. So if you had, you'd have a red wire coming in here, and then a red wire leaving going to your next one and when you put your device up the device itself completes that circuit and the point is if you take the face uh, the actual device itself down it should cause a trouble so it's their way of supervising that the device is installed properly so my first thought was instead of splitting the positive which is what you split on the wheel lock devices somebody made a mistake and split the negative so effectively once you put the strobe up you're you're, you're you know, wired positive to negative. So that was my first thought. So real quickly, I just popped down all three visuals inside the suite and um, none of them were wired incorrectly. So I thought I'd get lucky. I didn't. Um, so then I, then I had to start troubleshooting it, right? So I, I knew I had two ohms um, and I know that when I went to this device here and took it down, I had 24 volts one way and I had my short the other way, but the short was much closer. I don't remember the exact reading on my meter, but let's say it was, um, let's say it was like one ohm or something like that. So I, I, I knew that there was a pretty good chance it was in this suite. You know, there had been recent construction. However, coincidentally, there was also a recent construction project in the common area of the hallway. So th there was some fire alarm work going on there as well. But when I got to these two is when I noticed a difference. So I had 24 volts. These are back to back. So picture one piece of conduit coming down the ceiling and then two boxes back to back, right? So you've got an in and an out, um, hits one device, goes to the next device and then goes back out. At one of these horn strobe, or I'm sorry, it was just a strobe. I had the 24 volts present, but my short was towards the end of the line. And on the other one, 
I had my end of line present and my short was toward the voltage. So I knew that I was right on the problem. So the, the power supply for that building was um, similar to the one we've been looking at. It's a different part number, but as I've said several times, these all work the same. So if you've heard me saying I had 24 volts, the reason is um, the power supply that I was using is a Honeywell HP FF8CM. And those put out, even their supervisory voltage, even though the polarity is reversed, it puts out 24 volts. Um, we were using, the nice thing about that model of power supply is they have another, they have a terminal where you can install um, a reference resistor. And so you don't have to use one specific type of resistor, you get a range. And so uh, these were 10K resistors, you install the 10K here and then, uh, you know, on the reference terminal, and then the, the power supply knows to knows to refer you know use that as a reference so all the field ones are 10k and so with the 10k resistor the 24 volts on a complete circuit would drop to something like 15 volts so 15 volts um, would have told me I had a normal complete circuit 24 would have told me I had an open um, in this case I had zero because I had a short across it well um, these are the back-to-back -back strobes let's say so imagine you have um, imagine you've got you know your your pipe coming this is your pipe and then your wires you've got a, a negative or I'm sorry a positive coming into one device leaving going to the other and then going back up and onto the next device and then for the negative that one doesn't get split so you go to the negative terminal you go here and then back out and you would tape these and label them hopefully so that it's easier for the next guy but the nice thing about troubleshooting these is once you pop the uh, the actual device off you don't have to disconnect any circuits because the positive opens up right so I went to one of these set my meter for voltage and on one of these I had 24 well yeah I had 24 volts because it was an open circuit and then on the other pair so I should draw this, I guess. I'd put my meter, my negative to negative here. I'd put my positive to one terminal. And then get the reading and then take it off and go to the other terminal, right? I mean, I, that should be obvious enough. And on one of these devices, I had 24 volts on one pair and then the short on the other. And then on the other device, I had um, the end of line resistor, my 10K on one pair and I had my short on the other so I knew that somehow as unlikely as it seems the problem was between these two devices and what ended up happening is one of the screws that uh, was mounted through the mud ring was piercing both wires so it was basically just you know shorting out the negative to the positive so I was able to you know correct that and uh, and life goes on but the, the, you know, again, the, the point that I want to drive home is when I got to these two devices and I knew I had my 24 one way and my end of line, which was 10K the other, I knew I was at my problem. And if I didn't understand the, what those two readings meant, I could have been chasing a ghost for the next several hours. So hopefully that makes sense.